Martial classes in D&D aren't usually the silver-tongued members of the party, but what if you still want to be a great fighter and a sweet talker? This build will show you how. To start with for our stats, you'll want to be taking the standard array. You want 15 dexterity, 14 wisdom, 13 charisma, 12 constitution, 10 strength, and 8 intelligence. And now, for our race for this build. This can be very flexible, but if you really want to maximize the silver-tongued potential of the fighter, then take the Reborn Race from Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, or go Variant Human or Custom Lineage, take the Martial Adept feat with your feat of choice, and take the Commanding Presence Maneuver. So what the Reborn does is allow us to add 1d6 to a skill check we make a number of times equal to our proficiency bonus, and for the Variant Human or Custom Lineage that got access to Commanding Presence, what this maneuver does is allow us to add 1d6 to Persuasion-based skill checks we make once per short rest by spending a Superiority die. In addition, if you decide to do this route, you can also get a very useful maneuver like pushing attack, disarming strike, or trip attack, just to name a few, since thanks to your feet, you actually get to take two maneuvers instead of just one. Then for your background, get something that grants the persuasion skill, and something you feel like would fit thematically for your character. So now if you take Reborn for your race, put your stat bonuses to Dexterity and Wisdom, effectively turning it into a 17 Dexterity and a 15 Wisdom. If you take Custom Lineage, put a plus 2 into Dexterity, turning it into a 17. And if finally, if you play a Variant Human Fighter, put a plus 1 to Dexterity and a plus 1 into Wisdom, turning it into a 16 Dexterity and a 15 Wisdom. Now, for classes and levels, really starting to like get into the meat and potatoes of the build. To start with, we're going into Fighter. At first level, we're going to get a Fighting Style, and if you decided to go Reborn for your race, at this point, you'll want to take the Superior Maneuver Fighting Style, and then give yourself access to the Commanding Presence Maneuver. And for those keeping track at home, this already allows you to add 2d6 to Persuasion Skill Checks at level 1. You're welcome! But if you took Custom Lineage or Variant Human for your race, you can feel more than welcome to take this fighting style again to give yourself another superiority die and other useful maneuvers, or take a different fighting style. And then from here, we're going to continue along for the next two levels of fighter and then take Samurai Fighter for our subclass. Then we'll continue on deeper into fighter until we get to level 7. By this point too, we'll have received two ability score improvements. You'll want to put all of your points into Dexterity and anything left should go into your Wisdom. By level 7, it should be safe to assume that your character should have 20 dexterity and a minimum of 14 wisdom, depending on what race you took to start with. But now back to the classes. At level 7 is where you'll get access to the Elegant Courtier feature. This allows you to add your wisdom modifier to persuasion checks that your character makes. So assuming we have no lower than a 14 wisdom, that means we get to add an additional plus 2 to persuasion checks. And now from here, we dip into Ranger for a bit. We'll be taking the Deft Explorers option from Tasha's and take Canny and give ourselves expertise in Persuasion. At level 2, you gain a fighting style, and personally, I would recommend taking Archery as the fighting style here. This build is much more ranged and relies on dexterity, and at this point, it can really help us increase our damage output. And then at third level, we take the Fey Wanderer subclass. Our third level feature, Otherworldly Glamour, allows us to add our Wisdom modifier to any Charisma checks we make, and this ability stacks with Elegant Courtier. Now, let's look at this build. We're currently 10th level, and a majority of what we need has already come online. And now for our final quote-unquote multi-class dip, we're going into Cleric, Peace Cleric specifically. The feature we're getting here is the Peace Cleric's Emboldening Bond. What this does is it allows us to mark a number of creatures around us equal to our proficiency bonus, including ourselves. Then, during the next 10 minutes, and while we're within 30 feet of any ally marked with this ability, we can roll a d4 and add it to the skill check, saving throw, or an attack roll we make. In addition, we can also take Guidance as one of our cleric cantrips, giving us the ability to add another d4 to skill checks. And for the most part, that's the build, really. You'd swing back over to Fighter for your remaining levels until you hit 20th level, and along the way you'd put any ability score improvements into boosting your Wisdom and Charisma. Your ability score improvement at 8th level of Fighter would go into Wisdom, bumping it up to a 16. Your 12th level of Fighter gives you another AI which goes into Wisdom, turning it into an 18. At 14th level of Fighter, cap off your Wisdom to a 20, and for your final ASI and final level of Fighter at 16 and just final level in general, either take a feat or just bump up your Charisma. Looking over the build by level 20, you have the potential to be incredibly persuasive with this combo. So let's math it all out. That's a plus 10 from maxed out wisdom, a plus 1 minimum from your charisma, 
a plus 1d6 per short rest, a plus 1d4 from Guidance, plus 1d4 from Emboldening Bond, a plus 1d6 if you took the Reborn race, and plus 2 times your proficiency bonus from Expertise. If you're beloved by the dice gods and you roll max for everything, the d20 included, using this combo you can get a whopping 63 to Persuasion checks, a 57 if you took the Custom Lineage or Human. And if the dice gods hate you and all your rolls get their lowest value, meaning you even get slapped with a nat 1, that's still a 28. A 27 if you chose custom lineage or variant human. And bringing up this point now, I know throughout the build I've bounced between the three potential options for races. Custom lineage, variant human, in regards to this build are basically mechanically the same. We just take either of them because we're interested in the feat. However, they compete with the Reborn simply because taking these races gives you the option of more combat versatility and usefulness. By getting commanding presence earlier, it allows you to increase damage potential or defensive capabilities by getting something like the archery or defense fighting style at level 1, and then getting another useful style when you multiclass into ranger. This allows you to gradually build this character up progressively while still not trading in power and defense for a gimmicky build. While the build basically comes online and is, you know, fully kitted out by level 11, a useful combat fighting style really isn't available to you until you switch into Ranger if you decide to go Reborn. And mind you, the next time you have the ability to take an additional fighting style with this build as a Reborn would be at 9th level by dipping 2 levels into Ranger. So that's the trade-off between these races. I just wanted to bring that up, you know, because this is a point in the video that I've kind of been differentiating between them for the most part. If you go custom lineage or variant human, you have much more combat versatility, which is handy for a fighter, and at much earlier levels too. But if you go reborn, you'll gain an additional d6 that you can spend on your persuasion checks. The choice here is up to you, and you can do whichever you think is better. I just want to provide you the options of either going and being very persuasive, or the option of hitting hard and doing more damage and being more of a fighter. But looking over the build, let's see how it does. Due to our stats, we're going to be much more adept at ranged DPS will have incredible wisdom and even proficiency in wisdom saving throws as well, thanks to our Samurai's Elegant Courtier feature. We'll also be able to add an additional 1d6 to all of our attacks with Hunter's Mark, and a plus 1d4 thanks to our Fey Wanderer Ranger's 3rd level Dreadful Strikes feature. We also have some great utility, healing and flavor spells thanks to our Cleric and Ranger multi-classes as well, and we'll also be firing off a lot of attacks per turn, thanks to just being a fighter. And so, as I promised, you got the best of both worlds. A fighter that hits like a truck, and a character so silver-tongued it'll put the bards to shame. And that's the build! I hope you enjoyed it and that it gives you some fun ideas that you can use for your characters in the future. And if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like and subscribe for even more content.